The show actually has to look back and surpass the 90s because unlike nearly any other piece of pop culture, this is a show that has been on for 30 years. It's been on for multiple generations. Hi again, I'm Jack Bacone, host of The Simpsons Podcast, Worst Episode Ever, and this is part two of every job Homer has had on The Simpsons. We're going to define these jobs as anything Homer's done, paid or unpaid, ranging from his main job at the nuclear power plant to any of the many one-off gags, off-screen references, and whatnot over the course of 31 seasons and counting. Don't! This guy in here owes us money. Leave him to me. Oh, ho, ho. I hurt my fist and my palm. Season 18 is actually the season that has the most episodes where Homer gets another job. When Fat Tony is shot and left in a coma, Homer takes over as a mob boss. It was only a matter of time. Beware the Taco Belly, woo! Hey. Homer becomes a Mexican wrestler named Taco Belly. <laughs> he was a mob boss, might as well be a Mexican wrestler. We're in season 18, folks. Simpsons, manly man, handyman at your service. Marge starts a carpentry business and uses Homer as a front since most people won't hire a woman. Homer takes all the credit, angering Marge, who leaves him to rebuild a roller coaster by himself, which nearly gets him killed. Now where's my parade? Homer accidentally signs up for the army and almost gets himself killed during some exercises. This is very similar to when he did the same thing in the Navy and in the reserves. Season 20 is a very big transitional period for The Simpsons. It's when it moved from a classic hand-drawn animation to HD era. This gave the writers a lot more options and the show at first subtly shifts uh, tonally. It, uh, they start taking more chances and it becomes more avant-garde. Go, go, go. They even slow down a bit in certain episodes, and basically, when you tune in week to week, you don't know what you're gonna get. Now, season 18, where we are now, is kind of the end of the first era. This is now where they're not avant-garde, they've almost become a parody of themselves, and that's why there's so many Homer Gets a Job episodes in this season. After inadvertently killing an ice cream truck driver, Homer takes the truck and becomes a driver himself. This is very similar to when he did the same thing with a plow truck, and with a freighter truck, and we'll eventually we'll see he does it with a tow truck. Uh, Homer likes trucks. Shipwreck! To cheer Marge up, Homer rebuilds the boardwalk of her childhood vacation town, and then immediately burns it down by accident. To repay the town, he becomes a fisherman, joining a fishing crew. Manure for sale! Get your manure! This is a mockumentary where we see Homer at various ages. When he was younger, he had several jobs, including his first after-school job, manure salesman. Additionally, he's an infomercial actor, where he gets paid to ask questions in infomercials. And he's a character artist for open coffin funerals. Did he have any hobbies? <laughs> I also wreck bar mitzvah! After accidentally photographing a celebrity scandal and making a lot of money, Homer becomes a tabloid paparazzo. Homer eventually gives up the gig in exchange for celebrities treating their fans with more respect. This is one of the first times where Homer's job comes because something went viral. I'll be a rep. When Lisa's soccer referee quits, Homer takes a job because he hears the players actually have to share their snacks with him. Dad, where'd you get that outfit? I got fired from Foot Locker. Homer gets his referee outfit from when he was fired at Foot Locker at some point. I'll take five mattresses. I don't work here. You do now, son! When Homer falls asleep on a store model of a mattress and actually ends up selling five of them, he gets hired to become a mattress salesman. Any moment... What the hell is that? That's the fire siren! Homer crashes into a firehouse and injures the entire fire department, so he becomes a firefighter while they recover. He begins stealing from the houses he saves before his family guilts him into giving his loot to the homeless. This job is in the trend of Homer getting a job because he accidentally injures or kills the person who had it before. Homer becomes an opera star after Dr. Hibbert realizes that when he lies on his back, his stomach lodges underneath his diaphragm and gives him a powerful voice. After being stalked by a fan, Homer quits and discovers his talent for painting while on his back. The painting is more of a hobby that comes on as a joke on the tail end of the opera, so we're not going to consider it a separate job. Ah, oh, my first toe! Homer becomes a tow truck driver after befriending one in the neighboring town. When he accidentally tows in their territory, Homer is locked up in his basement until Marge breaks him out. At this point, Homer's driven ambulances, plow trucks, regular trucks, so we might as well add tow truck to the mix. Man! You work as a silhouette model for one day and it haunts you for the rest of your life. In this episode, Homer mentions he was once a silhouette model for mudflaps. 
Homer and Marge are rival assassins in a Treehouse of Horror parody of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And like the previous Treehouse of Horror, we're counting this one as a job just because the original base story takes place in a Springfield that mostly resembles our own, as opposed to an alternate universe take on Homer. Pain is brown. Hate is white. Rocker. In an infamous retcon that updates Homer and Marge's early years from the 70s to the 90s, Homer is now a member, songwriter, frontman for the grunge band Sadgasm. Homer becomes rich and famous, but the band breaks up before Bart is born. This episode, that 90s show, is probably the episode that finally made me feel old. What's interesting about this episode is the show initially defined the 1990s. It was the 1990s. And now that we've moved so far away from that decade, the show actually has to look back. It surpassed the 90s and it has to update the entire canon of the show for it to kind of make sense. The 90s? Never heard of it. Homer and Marge started out as baby boomers, and now we're completely retconning them to be Generation X. If the show goes on for another 10 years, Homer and Marge are gonna become millennials. The show has actually been on so long that the very nature of the stories it tells and the world it takes place in has changed, quite like the real world has. I mean, look back 10 seasons to when Homer had this obscure internet company. Hey, what the... Huh, the Internet King. I wonder if he can provide faster nudity. To, so at this point, the Simpsons even have smartphones. Marinating with you is cool. Dang, son. <laughs> <laughs> Some of that is cow blood. Homer makes his own homemade beef jerky. They never really say when this started happening or where or why, but when it comes to food, we don't ask questions with Homer. Stop! In the name of a private citizen with no connection to the law! Homer, you could have killed him. I sure could have. Homer and Ned become bounty hunters for bail skippers. And I remembered this abandoned greenhouse outside of town. Which used to be a beautiful, thriving greenhouse till I was hired to run it. Homer helps take care of endangered bees in an abandoned greenhouse for Lisa, and later mates them with Moe's killer bees to make a hybrid species that can survive. This weird phenomenon of bees dying off really became uh, part of the cultural consciousness at this point, so The Simpsons had no choice but to bring it up somehow. Ireland doesn't like pubs anymore. This isn't the first time Homer's been a bartender, but it is the first time he's been a bartender in Ireland. He and Grandpa get really drunk in a pub in Ireland and end up buying the place. To boost sales, they allow smoking inside. When the show started in 1989, smoking in bars was actually very common. It wasn't until the 90s that it became more and more illegal. So this is kind of a commentary on the good old days when we could choke on cigarette smoke inside a bar. Homer lands the lead role in a superhero blockbuster film called Everyman. He loses, then gains back his weight, and the film flops. Not only is this the first time Homer's been an actor, but he's even been a superhero before. One thing's for sure, I'm not Everyman. I'm making you my new executive assistant. Why can't I keep the job I have now, whatever it is? When Carl becomes supervisor at the power plant, he chooses Homer to be his personal assistant. Not only is this another job Homer has had the plant, it's not even the first time he's been somebody's assistant at the power plant. Let's give the Olympics a miracle. Homer and Marge compete in the 2010 Vancouver Olympics as Olympic curlers. And while Homer was a great softball player in the work league and has worked with a lot of famous athletes, this is the first time he himself is actually on the field. Or the ice, or whatever they call it. I'm uh, not a big curler guy. What, this guy? Hey! Oh! Homer is arrested for bribing a city official to clear up multiple fines, and to avoid prison he becomes an FBI informant, going undercover in prison to investigate Fat Tony. They actually bond and become friends, and when Fat Tony finds out Homer's a rat, he has a heart attack and dies. The Fat Tony we see from here on out is actually his identical cousin, Fit Tony, who then gained a bunch of weight and became Fat Tony. Your memory's not deceiving you, this is not the first time Homer got in trouble and then became an informant for the FBI. No! No! Homer is the voiceover actor for Angry Dad in Bart's Oscar-nominated short film. This isn't the first time we've seen Homer as an actor, and it's not even the first time we've seen him as a voiceover actor. If you remember, he was Poochie. The name's Poochie D, and I rock the telly. I'm half Joe Camel and a third Bonzarelli. My time being wasted was not wasted! Just two episodes later, Homer gets even more acting experience, replacing Tommy Chong on stage as part of a new comedy duo, Cheech and Chunk. I bet you didn't think when you saw this list that Chong would be one of the jobs. Now, how could someone as young as you know about 20 years ago? After cutting Selma's hair with garden shears, Homer becomes the most popular hairdresser in town, until hearing the constant gossip of his women customers forces him to quit. 
Hairdressing is kind of another way Homer has expressed himself artistically throughout the run of the show. Homer once again becomes a superhero in a non-canonical Diving Bell and the Butterfly parody. After being bitten by a spider and completely paralyzed, Homer has to communicate through farting. Then he gets bit by a second spider, this one's radioactive, he shoots webs from his butt and becomes a superhero. If repeatedly rebooting Homer as a superhero isn't an example of The Simpsons as a funhouse mirror to society, I don't know what is. Now I want a list of a hundred ways to make your job worse by closing business today. Can one of the hundred be making the list? No. Homer gets an assistant at work, just like he did in season two, except instead of Harvey Firestein, I am nature's greatest miracle! I'll need three weeks vacation and moving expenses. You got it, buddy! Now we have Jane Lynch. This assistant actually becomes Homer's boss when she rats him out to Mr. Burns, and Homer becomes her assistant. When Homer and Lisa find out that most young adult fantasy novels are ghostwritten by committee, he decides to get rich quick by putting together his own writer's group and penning the Troll Twins of Underbridge Academy. Our book will be about an orphan who goes to a magical school where he discovers he's a vampire. This book eventually becomes a success, but all the credit is stolen by author Neil Gaiman. The higher they rise, the further they fall. You know, you're kind of a downer. Mr. Burns makes Homer an account executive after a video of them karaokeing together goes viral. With the new corporate position, Homer becomes colder and more distant from his family. This entire plot is heavily influenced by Mad Men, which was very much at the forefront of pop culture at the time. Welcome to Gut Check with Homer Simpson, where the truth is served with a side of in your face. After a YouTube video of Homer ranting goes viral, Homer is given his own political cable show. He missed the being full of crap after choosing Ted Nugent to be the Republican presidential candidate. So not only is this another job that Homer gets from going viral, but again it plays on this evolution of how the show treats politics. Where once Homer was kind of an apolitical everyman, this is definitely more about the actual polarization of politics in the country. Red versus blue, Republican versus Democrat. Homer specifically here is a conservative pundit. The Republicans are the ones that choose Homer as their face. Woohoo! I'm your Jesus! Me! So Homer isn't actually Jesus Christ here, he's playing him in a passion play, and he actually blows the audience away with an amazing performance until his weight crushes the cross and he collapses. Stupid blenders, go! Speaking of Jesus, Homer becomes a deacon for the church for a new young hip reverend played by Edward Norton, who wins Homer over using a lot of pop culture references. What Jesus is saying really can be explained by an episode of Californication. I'm not one for taking new jobs on a whim, but as we say in the snowplow business, I'm your astronaut. Bart and Flanders team up to get Reverend Lovejoy back because Bart actually misses the time Homer would spend at home. Now let's play Human Foosball! Lisa gives a speech on her dad that mentions the time he was a soccer ref, and it goes viral, so he's actually invited to Brazil to be a ref at the World Cup. This is another job that Homer gets because he goes viral. And you might have noticed now that we're seeing a dramatic decrease in how many jobs Homer works per season, and that's because the show has really found its footing in this new HD era, where we're several seasons in, and the storytelling and the types of episodes we're seeing are more outside the box, more avant-garde, from week to week, just complete different tonal changes, and they don't need to rely as much on the Homer gets a job trope. We're seeing them focus on characters we really haven't explored before, we're seeing them do formats and types of shows we've never really seen before. At this point in season 24, 25, 26, the poetic license of the show has expanded so much that it doesn't need to rely on tropes anymore. Each week, The Simpsons kind of can do whatever it wants, and still be The Simpsons. After buying a bass guitar, Homer forms a cover band with Kirk Van Houten, Revan Lovejoy, Dr. Hibbert, and Apu. When Apu breaks out on his own, Homer becomes jealous and the band breaks up. This is yet another episode that Homer finds success as part of a band, whether it's the B-Sharps, Sadgasm, or Archie Bell and the Drells. Night gathers. Now my Duff watch begins. After Duffman requires hip surgery, Homer wins a reality show contest to become the next Duffman. Ow! The job requires Homer to stay sober, and when he realizes the detrimental effects of alcohol, he actually starts advocating people to drink less, which quickly gets him fired. 
And this job is actually a dream job for Homer. It's the personification of partying and drinking beer. So it's very ironic that once Homer gets it, he realizes just how bad alcohol is for you. This is one of those times where his heart kind of prevails and he turns on his job and he turns on his employers for the greater good. Dirty, clean, dirty, clean. When Lisa starts an app developing company at home, Homer freaks out at the burgeoning digital age and relives simpler times by taking his old job as a dishwasher at a Greek diner. Unfortunately, the job pays essentially nothing. This story might seem familiar because Homer actually did the same thing over a dozen years ago. But even though it's the same story on paper, they're in very different worlds with very different things to say. So when Homer started his internet company from home, he was kind of looking forward to this brand new horizon. Whereas now anybody can kind of develop an app from home and Homer has taken the role of the reactive agent. He is afraid of new modern times and this is why he regresses and goes back to an old job as a dishwasher. And reflecting the world and reflecting society, uh, the show's idea of the internet has completely changed from when Homer did it. When Homer did it, it was this radical new way to make money, this kind of futuristic technology. And now coding and developing apps is a day-to-day -day job. It's, it's very normal. It's a, that's why Lisa, an eight-year-old, can even do it. That's the package. What package? The package you're delivering. Ooh. At this point, we've seen Homer smuggle sugar, alcohol, fruits and vegetables, so why not an exotic snake? Oh dear, I can't afford it. Now, Homer's been an entertainer before as either a musician or an actor or a voiceover actor, so it really made sense for him to become an improv comic because improv comedy was really at its height around now. But we've been talking about how the show has evolved in the way it tells stories and the stories it tells, but we really haven't talked about how it's evolved in animation technology, and this might be the pinnacle of it. This episode's very fascinating because at the very end of the show, Homer's voice actor, Dan Castellaneta, actually improvises the final minutes of the show. He improvises his own Seen even taking phone calls from viewers, which is crazy. Hello? Joe. Hey, Homer, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Is that your question? I was wondering, what kind of car do you drive? I said, oh, uh, I drive a hybrid, which is a combination of old and terrible. For both the East Coast and the West Coast, he performs twice using kind of a pre-rendered Homer, but with his mouth actually matching Dan Castellaneta's mouth. Now, we've talked about how the show has evolved in terms of storytelling and writing and the world it exists in, but this episode is fascinating because it shows just how far the show has come in terms of animation technology. This would have been impossible 20 years ago because it would be a terrible strain on the animator's wrists. Homer, what are you doing here? We had to do whatever it takes to get you to leave. When Marge is arrested for child negligence, Homer actually becomes a guard at the prison to help her escape. Now, on its surface, this might seem like one of Homer's law enforcement adjacent jobs, but it's actually more in tune with his illegal smuggling jobs because he is trying to break somebody out of prison. So the Simpsons actually move to Boston, basically because Homer falls in love with Candlebin Bowling. He gets a similar job there as safety inspector, but at the New England Candy Factory. And the Simpsons start to make a new life in Boston, at least until Homer finds out that their football team cheats. This is yet another job Homer takes on because of his impulsiveness, basically because he likes the way the pins are in Boston. Homer, next week we finally take our revolutionary teeth whitening strips to market. In uh, another retcon of Homer and Marge's early years, this is when they're living in Capital City and kind of working cool young hip jobs. And this is one of them for Homer that he loses sometime after Bart is born. I have a question for you. On bones, did you ever have any bones with meat left on them? And if so, where are those bones? Homer and Flanders make a movie for the Christian film market that earns over $100 million at the box office. Although Homer doesn't end the episode as a millionaire, he ends up giving it away to charity. That's why check this out. The car is driving by itself. I'm a genius. After Homer crashes into Mr. Burns' office and is fired, he kind of gets the perfect job, a tester for self-driving vehicles. All he has to do is sit there and let them drive themselves. What's funny about this plot is when they did the self-driving truck storyline in season 10, two decades ago, it was a completely far-fetched science fiction idea. Now there really are startups for self-driving vehicles, so it kind of makes sense that Homer would end up working for them again. Man, team blow. Oh, team blow. So at this startup, Homer and Marge show these overworked employees how to have fun and end up getting hired to be the employee fun managers. This is kind of a take on startup culture and how employees are driven to just work a very long hours and not have any fun. 
I was on board until the shawarma screamed. <laughs> Very disappointing. Lisa gives her TV recapping job to Homer because he watches a lot of TV, and he has a lot of fun with it until Krusty tries to run him off the road for giving him a bad review. You want to see something really humor? TV recapper is one of those jobs that didn't really exist in season 10, so we're not seeing it until season 30. In an extended flashback sequence, young Homer and Marge actually work on a film starring Krusty, and Homer works as a PA, a production assistant. Esports coach. Homer coaches Bart and other conflict of enemies players in a world championship held in Seoul, Korea. This is a job and an industry that, again, did not exist 20 years ago. Esports was not a thing, and now it's extremely popular, so it would be remiss if The Simpsons didn't cover it at some point. You could literally play football without any feet. Now we're in the most recent season of The Simpsons, so we're kind of seeing again the same tropes, but in a different light. This has Homer's quick rise and fall, as well as Homer going viral, Homer having a knack for being a solid entertainer, a good frontman, and it kind of all comes together here when Homer becomes a successful host on a YouTube type platform. Listen up, Millennium. I'm Homer Simpson, your new supervisor. Homer is demoted to this position, and I've lost count at how many different positions he's had at the power plant at this point. He's basically had them all besides janitor, which we'll probably see in season 32's Homer the Janitor or something. Homer sells weed legally to clientele who kind of miss the old way of doing things, the illegal dirtbag experience. So he starts selling it from the back of Moe's. Lenny is on the floor playing video games in a hoodie. He kind of recreates the old way of selling drugs to make more money. And that's it. That's each and every job Homer has had on The Simpsons in the first 31 seasons. So the next 31 seasons, uh, we'll, we'll get back to you. I have to go now. My planet needs me.